So um, the soil depth <laughs> is uh, critical for recharge. We're all familiar with that, um, hopefully. <laughs> um, and there's this issue of housing contractors and developers stripping and selling topsoil from the foundation excavations as part of their development profits and then relaying the surface with soils that are impermeable. This is a real problem. So what legal avenues exist for ensuring topsoil is kept on site as a priority? Pretty loaded question. So um, Derek <laughs> stole my thunder on this. Communicate, communicate, communicate. And it's very consistent with what Kevin just said. Um, some of the ideas that uh, I had jotted down, you know, having people sign acknowledgements as part of a subdivision agreement, working with contractors that you know that it's, it's not the way this community does business. Communicate to the entire development community that you want topsoil left on site and that it's a cost that they're going to have to build in so that there are no surprises down the road. Expectations are very clear on that. Um, and then also build it into your bylaws. And you have a number of different uh, powers for achieving this kind of thing. They're all listed there. I won't read them out. Um, but there's different ways of achieving this. Um, strategies along the way in terms of communications. Again, you know, seminars for training people, pre-construction meetings with all of the players in attendance. Um, making sh just make sure that people make an allowance for topsoil and uh, do this bonding as well. So, um, who wants to discuss that sort of issue? Piece to this is a lot of people have no idea uh, of what type of material is good topsoil. Mm -hmm. And the problem is they throw anything on there and call it topsoil and it just isn't so. Uh, I've got several uh, drainage complaints are the biggest complaint that ever comes down the pipe. Uh, cities get a lot of drainage complaints and you constantly get drainage complaints if you go and you look at the property and it's extremely unsuitable ground and extremely unsuitable soils and it's caused a lot of grief for people and of course they want you to get in there and help them sue their neighbor. I just find that uh, throwing a foot of soil on, uh, we've really got to uh, get a good understanding of what is proper before we throw it up. We can tell people to throw it on, so because I don't even understand it well enough myself. So there has to be a good standard of soil mm -hmm. as well as as well as the depth. There has to be a good standard of quality. Good feedback. Yeah, I struggle with that all the time. Yeah. Um, uh, the developers. Uh, don't they they just don't want to put that soil on that the city of Courtney is requiring and and uh, finally I got I, I, I got reamed out by one guy for actually showing up late night sort of checking out the soil depth and he was there and he saw me as I was digging and <laughs> anyway um, uh, uh, what I was going to say is um, Finally, that developer did start putting uh, the proper depth of soil in, and, and they higher seeded the, uh, the grass. And what happened was it rained, uh, you know, really bad, really bad rain right after they hydro seeded, and the whole thing turned to mush. And so he kind of pointed his finger at me and said, See, you know, this is a really stupid thing to do. And it's, it's so it's that's a really hard one, that soil one. How to do it properly? How to enforce it? Right. Yeah. It's, it's in Courtney. They've got they've got the uh, you know amounts that should be there now, and I am having the hardest time getting the developers to do this. Mm -hmm. They don't understand yeah. why. When the, with the stuff I was involved with the gray water uh, mm -hmm. boxes, and we were required to provide a particular quality of soil. I mean, it could be, it was prescriptive and, and, and it was, if they were able to define it. So right. It so I don't see why yeah. we can't do it on, on subject. I would think, yes, <coughs> that there are third party standards for this kind of thing. I'm not a soil expert myself. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Do you have any so is Courtney not published? Any materials on that? On your computer? Not specifically, it's an OCP, so it's in policy. That's where it is at the present time. We're working on the next step. 
we just don't there yet. And then there are issues with the depth of soil. You end up for the first year with the soup bowl because of the soil type often. So you need some granular, you need some stability in that soil. If you have one foot of topsoil, you're going to have a mess in this part of the world until the roots get down and they get some strength to that soil. So there's the dilemma as well. So is that done in a condition of subdivision, Kevin? Uh, we have it in our subdivision control bylaw. But often the site is not left with 300 millimeters of topsoil on it. We have one right now that's a test case for us, actually uh, Brookmere Development next to McDonald Road. We're seeing how well that works. And then the next one is to see when the builders go in, did they scrape off the 300 millimeters, did they stockpile it, did they draw it back, or when they dig the foundation, which is the basement, did they halt the way or did they bury the topsoil? So we're working through that process right now. We're, we're looking at the practical aspects of what we're asking for. Um, 